Okay, in this video about Minitab, I don't really need the data. I've got a data file here so that various things are active, but I'm not actually going to do any analysis. I'm going to talk about customization because you can do a fair bit and it can save you some time. First of all, note that I've got an individual toolbar up here that has buttons for the things I most commonly do. Scatter plots, subsetting data files, ANOVA, GLM, and so on. Um, those are easy to create in Customize. So here, toolbar, I can make a new toolbar and then I can put commands on it. Now I'm not going to go through how doing that. Once you've got something set up like this, it is then helpful to save those settings, especially if you work sometimes on a different computer. And that's where Manage Profiles comes in. So in I said I wasn't going to do anything with data, not quite correct. I'm going to do a scatter plot to demonstrate something. So here, let's go with groups. I'll look at species number against hydrocarbons by site. And there I get a pretty standard looking mini tab graph with pretty much the defaults. Now, manage profiles. A profile is the settings, the defaults, the toolbars, and those things. So at the moment I'm using a default profile, which I call my profile. I can pull that out and instead activate Keith's BW. Now, when, it, when I do that, it changes the window size, so I've got to get it back. And now let's do scatter plot again. Oh, sorry, that's just looking at the graph. Let's go back to the data. And uh, you'll notice my toolbar has gone here because I haven't got that toolbar set up in this particular profile. So I'll have to go to graphs, scatter plot, groups, same options here. OK. See, all the options for the graphs have changed to different defaults and BW here stands for black and white. So I've got this set up for drawing graphs for black and white, which I might use for publication or a report. Um, all of these aspects of the graph can be customized and saved. I've actually got a different one profile, which is not in that list at the moment, which I created for doing a PowerPoint presentation, which has colors that I like to go with my PowerPoint presentation. So that's under Tools, Manage Profiles. And I'm going to go back to the default. Whoops, my profile. And we do this again. Um, now, I want to go back to the default settings. I get my toolbar back and look at where you change these options and it's here as you might expect under options and I'm not going to go through all of this but I will look at some of the things that I think are useful so one is setting the default file location so that it actually points to wherever you usually have your data files then if we look at the data window um, this one is handy entry direction you can do this in Excel too, so you can switch between enter going down the columns or across the rows. Sometimes when you're entering data, going across the rows is more useful. And then I like to change the data font for the numbers and text in the sheet itself and also for the labels to, uh, in this case, Calibri. Uh, DDE links I'm looking at, dialog box. Um, if you've got a very big data file, you may have some columns hidden and you can switch the option here so that only the unhidden columns show up in dialog boxes and that might be very handy 
if you've got a file that has lots and lots of variables that are used in calculations and then it's only a small set that are actually used for the analysis. Um, the session window I like to uh, fiddle um, with. So I've got enter submitting the input if I'm using the um, session commands. And up here command language enable disable that's kind of an odd one because it looks like it turns the command language or session language on and off and why would I have it off when I actually do use session commands from some time this puts them or sorry disable means they don't show up in the report so when uh, the results come up if this is enabled be immediately before the results, you'll have the commands you use to get that, and I think that makes the uh, display very messy, so I'll leave it off. Um, output, uh, did he, this one I like to change. Uh, the default is something like 70, and it was set when we had narrow monitors, and so if you had that too wide, it overflowed. Uh, but now we've got usually 16 to 9 monitors and we can use more columns and if you're doing a correlation uh, table and you're looking at correlations of a lot of variables this will mean that they will all show up nicely rather than wrap and then wrap and wrap and then you can change the input font uh, the title font and the font you use when you're typing in your own text so you just fiddle around with that um, you can save the current window layout which you might do if you've got Windows set up in a particular way. Um, the Assistant, uh, don't fiddle with that too much. System, uh, you can change how the memory is used. So if some if Minitab's running a bit slow, you can bump up the memory. Uh, formulas is similar to in Excel uh, about whether formulas should be updated automatically, manually, and calculated. Uh, you can configure the defaults for stepwise regression. Now let's go and look at the graphics because this is what I fiddled with to change the defaults. So you can see here a whole lot of things and again I'm not going to go through all of them but if we look for instance at regions you can set the colors, you can set the lines, you can set the size and so at the moment you're seeing mini tabs defaults for these but if I you know, when I was doing my PowerPoint I went in and changed these things here to a color scheme that matched the color scheme for the PowerPoint um, frame elements axis labels so this is where you're setting the font and so on um, set defaults for the scales how the ticks are, default font, and what you want shown. Uh, then you can look at the data view, data view with groups, annotation, panels, graph size, and etc. 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 So there's a lot of stuff there that you can tinker with and customize, and then save that as a profile so that if something happens, you can restore all those settings or you can switch between different sets of settings. Now, one that is handy to look at, sorry, I'm just tidying this up a bit here. You can fiddle with individual graphs. So down here, I use interval plots a lot. So I can set the type of interval to be the standard error, set the multiple, set the confidence level and so on um, and it might turn this to be upper one-sided um, for scatter plots I'll be working with the graphics here and changing the settings in there for the labels um, the symbols and so on now just got to remember here we go. Uh, individual commands. This is another thing which is handy to fiddle with. So one commonly used command, descriptive stats, 
you can set what stats are showing up. So I don't really use the, the quartiles much, um, so I might turn those off. Um, and, and then you've got options down here for behaviour when opening spreadsheet files, comma separated files or text files. So there's an awful lot of things in there that you can fiddle with to set Minitab up so that it works the way you want to. And what I'd be doing is fixing or well, things I would look to do would be getting the graphs set up the way you, you like them, um, setting up the output, setting up the display of the data window, and going to some of the things that affect the, the things you commonly do and setting them up the way you would like. Now, as it happens, Minitabs defaults for most things are okay for me, so it's only when I come to do specialised things like black and white reports or PowerPoint presentations where I want to change the colours and the display that actually fiddle with these things much at all. But this one here, making the little toolbar, is one that can save you quite a lot of time. And perhaps I should show you how to put buttons up there. So if I've created it, and I can go Customize, and then here are the various commands. I can just pick a command up as you do in other things and pop it up there and it's on the toolbar. Uh, and I can have the toolbar showing as uh, icons, pictures, or as text, or as both. Um, and I could, if I can be bothered, edit the image for this. And here, copy and paste, and I'll probably do that later, just so to make these things a little bit shorter. Okay, that might make your life working with Minitab a little bit more efficient, and if so, good.